campfire chat is over and they already dropped some interesting news for itemization to come in the future plus abattoir of zero gameplay and we do have the final pieces of information we need to really tell you which build is going to be good also very important they're talking about the pay to win accusations for diablo 4. let's start with abba 12 zero gameplay in the background first and tell you all the details then go down on itemization and more the first big thing is you do actually have to complete your seasonal journey yes this is not a joke the idea behind it is if you're unable to even complete the seasonal journey and we're talking here defeat duriel have some uniques and 925 items be able to complete a tier 90 nightmare dungeon and potentially also destroy Lilith, then you're truly not ready for the Abba 12 Zier. Now this behind me here is going to be a tier one Abba 12 Zier dungeon. That means it's like a nightmare 104 dungeon. The enemies are level 155, so slightly tougher. They don't do much more damage because here's the clue. The scaling truly is HP. And we'll get to that with a tier 10 Abba 12 Zier in a second. The interesting part is you won't know the affixes things have. So it's not like opening a nightmare dungeon and seeing lightning enchanted, poison damage over time, EDC, Papi. No, you see nothing, you get surprised. And that's actually kind of annoying right now because we know that burning damage, bleeding damage, poison damage, shadow damage over time, all of these are actually bugged and do way too much damage. So as a Necro, for example, you do have to play Blood Mist already if you have a case of getting these damage over time stacked up because else you'll 100% die, even if you have 20,000 barrier continuously replenishing. Now the abattoir works following. You go into the dungeon, you have 10 minutes and you have zero lives. Yep, you die, it's over. You have to kill X opponents to summon the boss. And the boss is actually not going to be one of the standard dungeon bosses you know. It's gonna be three blood seekers. And these blood seekers are gonna have Varize affixes. And that's already a very interesting thing that is the blood seekers. Because you can stun them, you can stagger them, and you can stagger them very easy. So crowd control is an interesting factor to be played a role here. Bloodseekers can actually be pulled together by corpse tendrils. Having corpse tendrils as a necker and the corpse tendril autocast works really good. I mean, there's the ball of lightning sword right behind me, and you can see there's continuously stuns happening from the lightning damage as well. So if you do play something, if you do play a build that can stagger, that can stun, that can crowd control, that is going to be helpful here. And especially if you do have a build that doesn't just focus on one target. I'm playing Blood Surge, for example. I'm doing damage to the whole room. So if I can pull together all three Blood Seekers, search, 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 go into Blood Mist, pull them together again, you get the drift, right? I'm going to make it easy for myself, and that's quite nice. Now, at the end, you get the XP for the Tears of Blood Glyph. And here we're saying have everything else 21 because you need 2000 XP to already level it up to level two and 4600 for level three. And you get 1000 XP for the T1 dungeon. We don't know how much Glyph XP the higher Abattoir of Zero dungeons are giving, but you only get 1000 here on right now. Which is a cool thing though to see still because if you still need to level something to 21 you could craft a lot of tier one sigils and then craft up all your missing nightmare sigils up to 21. after doing the simple abattoir of zero they actually jump straight into a tier 10. and here you can instantly see something interesting the damage is roughly the same he's not getting that much more damage it's just annoying opponents and yes layout and opponents vary from every abattoir of zero every single time no tier one is the same every time it's different environment with different enemies now the damage is roughly the same as it was with a tier one it's it's just not what they want to scale but the hp is exponentially higher and here we're talking you need group clear you need group clear single target clear is going to be atrocious you want to be able to just absolutely damage everyone around you and just get them down as fast as possible to summon the bosses and again the bosses are also really nice if you could kill them all at the same time or one after the other as a barbarian we'll see about that but yeah with all the necker builds actually being massive reactive damage to everyone this is going to be interesting and might it be giga dot might it be bone spear might it be blood search all are gonna work the ball of lightning sork is struggling here struggling for a reason though he did not equip the tears of blood cliff and here we'll see that Tears of Blood is 100% needed to scale your damage. Simple as is. Because right now, without the Tears of Blood, 
from tier 1 to tier 10 with his absolute maxed out ball of lightning so we're talking about super maxed out struggling struggling on survival a little bit and also struggling on damage to even get anything downed which means we do have to have an absolute end level character with very good items max roll and our uniques would be preferable in our aspects as well to then be able to truly challenge the abattoir of zero and that's exactly what we wanted to have and there's already a good thing that they mentioned at the end they want to do more abattoir of zero stuff so this is currently time gated content but they're going to learn a lot from it and tier three is definitely going to see also some kind of abattoir of zero as well with the learnings they get from this abattoir of zero so it won't vanish even when it's done it's just right now the first test of evergreen content to come now talking about itemization they dropped some really interesting lookout into the future here we're talking about loot filters the potential of loot filters and they hurt the community here and definitely want to integrate something like this but even more important they want to simplify items by a margin by a lot and what that means is right now a glove for example can have three core skill ranks so you can have bone spear blood surge and blood lance on it that's useless. No one wants this. And there are no systems in place to prevent that. And that was a big point of mentioning. Why would you want a triple resistance item? Yes, I know some people want triple resistance items, but they're going to be working on things like can only have one core skill on gloves, can only drop with two resistance slots. And if then you can roll your third one if you want. And I think this is very interesting because we have a lot of affixes. A lot of affixes are useless. And how often are you getting total armor, maximum life, and then you get two resistance stats and it's kind of weird. But if it was only one resistance stat, that would be better. I think this has to work in their back end as they're saying that they're limiting what can be paired together. I don't care if a helmet has to crepify an Iron Maiden. It should be either to crepify or Iron Maiden. My helmet should never be able to have two different skill ranks, which makes it worse. The same for pans. I mean, if it's, it's a blood mist and corpse explosion, it's automatically a dead item because I need two damage rats at least to make it worth it. Now, the problem is they have been talking about itemization, but the outlook for this is season four. Now, I do believe they'll simplify things, though, in the back end. We won't even feel it or we won't even notice it. And then it's going to be rolling out gradually. So I do expect some changes to come already with season three, especially when it comes down to 925 gear. Because right now, Duriel and well bosses are the only reliable way to get 925 gear. Yes, Grigor can drop it too. Varshin can drop it too. But you're doing a tier 100 Nightmare Dungeon and you're not even picking up the gear anymore because it's not worth it. I mean, tier 100 Nightmare Dungeon is pushed through, lives. Then you do Hell Tides and you trash all the items as well to get your charts. And then you do Duriel to get 925 gear that upgrades your gear. That's kind of like the progression. That's the grind. That's the farm. That's what we're looking at. And that's, that's just, that's not, not good. That's not what we're looking for. That's not what we want to have. So yeah, right now, they want to increase these places. They want to make it more regular. I mean, I feel like Abba 12 Zero, for example, something like this should only drop 925 gear. I think tier 100 dungeons should only drop 900 and above. Simple as it is. I know they're easy to farm, but once you reach that point, that's what you're looking for. I'm not looking for 800 gear anymore. I'm looking to get better. There was one very interesting point they mentioned, and that is the item journey. Because right now, getting an item, replacing an item is what we do. But we don't actually continue with items we love i mean if you found the perfect glove but the overpower roll or the crit roll is low it's only plus two ranks and not plus three ranks you can't get it higher but they're talking about giving us more of a journey with an item so if you find a good item a good unique something you really like that there's ways to upgrade it further ways to max roll stats that are not max rolled yet and that's the outlook in the future that they want to have you have progressive gear and not just exchangeable gear and I think that's truly interesting because I want I want to have my pens that I love and my chest that I'm so happy that I found and I still remember vividly the encounter. And if I'm able to just gradually update this with money, charts, things I get from Nightmare Dungeons, World Bosses, Dury, I don't even know. Like if I have to mold a unique into it, anything, that's cool because I can progressively increase on something I already have. I can have a perfect roll item with a four, four perfect stats. Only that the total armor is a low roll, but I want the total armor higher, but I can't re-roll anything anymore because I already re-rolled into, uh, you know, the four step to be perfect. But why can't I increase the total armor? And that's something that could be there in the future. Now, the final interesting part, Helltoids are going to be up permanently in Season 3. Yes, 
55 minutes up, five minute break, 55 minutes up, five minute break. That is fantastic and we're looking forward to it. Now, what about pay to win? There have been some leaks around and people have been going crazy, pay for power, other shenanigans. Clear statement multiple times throughout the stream. There are no plans. There's nothing in any way coming that is pay to for power, pay to win, get more stat specials with money that others don't get, anything in that direction. That's what they said. How much control they themselves have over it and daddy activision pushes their thumb down we don't know but that is the statement from the diablo 4 devs ladies and gentlemen i am excited i hope you are as excited as i am for the abo 12 zero as well and if you're now looking for banger builds i get you covered